Victory family, welcome back to the Victory Podcast. I'm Jason, and as always, I'm joined by Pastor Don White Cotton. Pastor White Cotton, thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to talk about uh, something that that you and I are by no stretch of the imagination experts at. So That's for sure. We're going to preface this by saying, listen to what we say and adjust it for your family because we are not experts and anybody who tells you they are experts on kids if you saw the title of the video they don't have kids uh every kid is different and and the the title of today's podcast is is raising g-rated kids in an r-rated world that can be a challenge um especially in the times we're living in you know parents have always really faced challenging times uh since the beginning of time, whether that was, you know, early on how to take care of children, you know, providing for them. We, we oftentimes take for granted that we have a supermarket right down the road, but you know, early on, how do I feed my children, you know, to, to things in, in recent centuries like war and drugs and crime and violence. And, and, you know, these things have always been around, but parents in, in the modern day, this mm -hmm. modern technology driven world, we really face a new set of challenges and and I mean from from your experience you've dealt with a lot of families over the years what are what are some challenges that 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 you feel kids face today or children face today well like you said am I am I going to tell people I'm an expert on the subject of right raising I'm children and my no my baby is 32 now is that right 30 Your wife Holly, how old are we? <laughs> Never mind. She's in there somewhere. Yeah, 32, 33. Um, if my wife were here, she'd know it instantly. I struggle <laughs> sometimes. So I raised my kids under a very different set of circumstances. I never had to deal with, they've got 24-7 access to the internet. They've got cell phones. And they've the got all this. Hand. The basic challenges kids face, and I feel for kids today, because... I read a long time ago and thought back that far. In 1958, I was in grade school, right? fairly early grade school at that. And the biggest problem teachers faced in 1958, Jason, in class was chewing gum. <laughs> now think about that. Yeah. Today, kids have much too easy access to really bad information. And yeah, you can, we can say parents, you need to check your child's browser history. Uh, they're smarter than I am on the computers. Unfortunately. They know how to erase their browser history. Well, and unfortunately, <clears throat> even, even on their phones nowadays, oh, yeah. there's, they, they have things that they can hide the, the worst of the worst from us parents. Absolutely and so. And it's always changing. Bad information. Parents make a mistake and put their and just overschedule their kids. Mm -hmm. Some of these kids would be better off with a full-time 40-hour a week job yeah. than what they're doing now. Between school, soccer, baseball, basketball, karate, picket. They literally don't have any time to be a child. Yeah. They're pressured to grow up much too early. Their little bodies and minds are not ready for some of the junk the media and again the internet put on them or even parents sometimes sometimes we demand a lot of our uh, children yeah we don't want to get started down that road because <laughs> then i'm gonna start in on child beauty pageants well. and <laughs> all this sort of thing and it's going to get really testy but we've got parents who put too much pressure on the kids to be little adults right. let them be children then we've got parents who are the exact opposite i believe the term is free range parenting yes where I don't want to warp my little child's personality. No, I want to warp it a little bit. Right. I want to warp it in a good way. That's why it's called raising children. That's not, exactly not right. birthing children and then kicking them out of the nest. Exactly right. There are too many voices with too many competing messages in today's world. As a result, we've got kids. And Brenda and I have eight grandkids. You know this. Again, ranging from a 20-year-old to a soon-to-be 3-year-old. Right. That's a pretty wide range. Mm -hmm. The problem is, from an early age, whether it's the shows they're watching on television, or again, what they're saying on the internet, or sadly, what they're being taught in school. 
these kids, and you know, the term that is used today is hypersexualization. Yeah. Look, I'm, I know I'm old fashioned, but my philosophy of life was always, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do everything in my power as a dad to keep my children as innocent as I can for as long as I can so that their little emotions and their mental processes have time to develop. Otherwise, you're putting them in situations they're not ready to handle yet. I mean, I, we, we used to joke with kids. I'd have kids come into church and say, well, I'm going with so-and-so. And they're fourth, fifth graders. And I'd always want to look and ask them, where are you going? Yeah. For, for those of you who are not, you know, 100 years old, going means dating or seeing somebody. Exactly. <laughs> but the point is, don't put that, with, these kids have so much pressure on them. And that not only impacts the child, it impacts the parent too. And they have to make some hard choices. <laughs> and I, I think a lot of times it's, it's, it's easy to blame the internet. It's easy oh, to yeah. blame TV. It's easy to blame the video games because that takes the responsibility off you as the parent. Mm -hmm. it, ultimately, your children are your responsibility. Yeah. If, if you check out and, and you hand them a cell phone that has access to the internet, which quite frankly has some of the most disgusting things in the world on it. Absolutely. And you don't check that. You don't monitor that. You don't sit with your children when they're online. That's how you get in these situations where, A, you have children growing up too fast because they want to be like a, a YouTube star. Absolutely. Or they want to be like their favorite Instagram model or... Their favorite you know, rock star. They, they yeah. think they have to you know look like that or act mm -hmm. like that or be like that. And that's... That's where you as the parent have to step in and go, no, you know what? You're just fine the way you are. And these are the values that we have. And this is right. why. Again, it's it's one of those things where we talk about free range parents. You just turn them loose. Right. And, and you can't do yeah. that either. So when you're getting ready to be a parent mm -hmm. and you have some, you have some hard choices to make. You have some hard yes, decisions to make as as a upcoming parent. Um, you know, there's there's sacrifice involved with being a parent, and one of those things is you now live your life for your child for a period of time. Absolutely. You know, what are some what are some choices that parents have to make w when thinking about having kids? All right. The first thing we got to do is clarify once and for all. What are my goals in parenting? I mean, we joke, and all of our kids would tell you this, that the goal of a parent is to raise a child so they can kick them out of the house. <laughs> eh, that's so, that, that's oversimplified and a little sarcastic. The goal of parenting, Deuteronomy chapter number 6, the Bible says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in thine hand. Here it is. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk with them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. In other words, you don't get time off from being a positive role model for your children, teaching them. It is a 24-hour day job to teach my children about the Lord, about God, about His ways. And when I say me, I mean, and this is, again, another problem we have in our day, Jason. We still have a lot of dads. I grew up in an era where dad's job was to bring home a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And he, everything else is kind of sketchy and hazy. Ephesians 6, 4 says, your fathers, get that part? Your fathers. My job as a dad. When the, I was taught this philosophy. When you're, when you're talking about people in the Bible... Look for who God says is responsible first and focus there. Well, God says, as a father, my job is to provoke not my children to wrath. Doesn't mean I never make them mad. It means I don't want to make them bitter right. and angry at me and angry at God as a lifestyle. But then it says this, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You see, the goals of a Christian parent as a, as a father, and I don't get to throw this off on my wife and say, you failed miserably. No, 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 no. God says it's my job to be the spiritual leader in the home. As a result, 
my job is to, whether we're getting up in the morning, going to bed at night, and everything in between, wherever we go, to be a Christian example and a Christian teacher to my children. And I'm not, and my lifestyle, it has to match what I'm trying to teach them. However that works out, that's what's going to be. It's, somebody's going to have to sacrifice. Right. There's no way around that. It's hard to do that, and I'm not saying it can't be done. Again, I'm not throwing out, you got to do it this way. That, that's too easy. But it is exponentially harder to raise kids right if the kids are coming home to an empty house. Somebody's going to sacrifice and be home with the kids. Right. It's almost impossible. Otherwise, you're doing what we do today. And again, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to say women shouldn't work, but let's be realistic here. A lot of kids are being raised by a total stranger in a daycare who has them, you know, they have them 12 hours a day sometimes. Right. And mom and dad get them, feed them something that they probably picked up on the way home. And at six o'clock, they're eating takeout food. And then at eight o'clock, they're putting the kid to bed. Now, who's raising that child? And as a parent, the hard time, I'm going to have to be all, you mentioned this a minute ago. As a parent, you got to be in your kid's business. They're not going to like it. Yeah. But we told our kids, you have no expectation of privacy. Anything you own, anything you have is open to inspection. And we followed up on it. You're going to have this one of the things you and I have talked about before. I'm concerned. Parents, a lot of parents are clueless. Yeah. They just are. And they're going to have to combat the bad information your kids are picking up at school. And the best place we ever found to do that was sitting down. This is the reason why it's so important that the family sits down and has the evening meal together at the table. Kid, we found this out year for years. Total strangers sitting at our table tell us stuff about their families. They open up when you feed them. Right. Um, your kids are the same way. And somebody's going to have to be the boss. Somebody's got to be. And believe me, if you don't want the job, your children will be more than happy to take it for you. You just won't like where it goes when it happens. That's not easy. But if parenting was easy, anybody could do it. Well, and I, I, I think a little bit what you spoke to. One of the biggest things when you're considering being a parent is being on the same page, mm -hmm. having the same oh. goals. Because if my son, you know, Colton, he's a wonderful little boy, mm -hmm. but he knows how to get what he wants. And this is where it comes in where we, as a couple, have to be together. Mm -hmm. We have to understand where the limits with our children are. And if you can't come together on the same page about how to, to interact with your kids, how to raise your kids, how to discipline your kids, your kids are going to play you like a fiddle. Sure they will. You know, and that is, <laughs> that is a, a big problem these days where, well, dad said no, but I'm going to go to mom, mm -hmm. right? Or, or vice versa. Now, we are strictly kind of talking from a dad's standpoint, right? given the, the verses that, that we've talked about here. Mm -hmm. We have some wonderful, wonderful biblical ladies in the church. So ladies, if you're watching this and, and you have questions specifically about biblical uh, motherhood, please reach out to us. We'll get you in contact with some, some great women that we have, and they'd be more than glad to talk to you about that. Absolutely. Um, we are in no way qualified to speak about that. Mm -mm. So, no. you know, we can only give you from from a uh, from a dad's standpoint. Right. And, and I know as as a dad and and we've talked about this, you know, over the past several years because of a job that I held until recently, I was gone 5 nights a week, you know, sometimes 2 weeks at a time. And that left a lot of 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 burden on my wife to to pick up that slack where I have two young boys that kind of demand a father role. Absolutely. I was lucky whereas not a lot of people are that my father-in-law Pastor Don was able to step in and fill that gap while I was gone. Ultimately that's not the way it should be. I I was putting 
for a long time, I was putting a job ahead of my kids. And, and I, have, I have made that shift. I have found, you know, something here. Ultimately, you're never going to get this time back with the kids. And, and, you know, 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, when you look at your kids and go, how did you get that way? It's so important to have a father in the home. It is. With those kids. It is. So how and would the you... the right kind of a father. That's right. A, a, a biblical father. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's great to be a good dad, yeah. but it's even better to be a biblical dad. There you go. So how would you approach, you know, kids growing up, they're getting ready to go to school. Mm -hmm. How do you approach schooling for children? How, how do you find that balance sending them out into the world with Jesus mm -hmm. and the Bible in their heart? But not having them so sheltered that that they're that weird kid. And I hate to say it like that, you know, because there's a lot of good Christian children, but they're so sheltered. They I mean, they've they get bullied, they get picked on, and it's a really unfortunate thing. But how how do you balance the two? Because each extreme no Bible, you know, free range. Throw them out the throw, throw them to the wolves, yeah. yes. And and the kid who their entire life is Bible and church, and that's mm -hmm. it. How do you, how do you balance those two extremes to get a a, a child that you know is going to be successful in life? Piggybacking on something you said a minute ago, you do it together. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I had to sit down, and here's the deal for you women. I do believe that the Bible in Ephesians 5 says the husband is the head of the home. I get the head of the wife, even as Christ the head of the church. But where I fear off, I don't think God's trying to say, I'm the boss, you're not. Shut up, sit there, woman. <laughs> That's not it. Yeah. It See, takes a I believe that a good husband, a good father, is better looked at as he's a coach. And this is my team we're talking about here. Well, last time I looked, Coaches rarely throw a pass in a football game. Never seen it happen one time. Right. As a coach, my job is not to make all the decisions. It is to get the best possible information. Well, my wife knows more about children than I'll ever know. Yeah. And I'm a fool if I don't listen to her and take her counsel into it. Into, we made up our minds a long time ago. We're going to sit down together. Our kids aren't going to get to play us because we're going to plan ahead. We've already talked about it. Before they ever get the chance to do that, we're going to talk about it together and we're going to come to a set of conclusions. Mm -hmm. That way, the kids figure out, well, that's not going to work. Can't play mom against dad, dad against mom. <laughs> Same thing is true when it comes to pick, picking a school choice for your child. You do it together because there's no easy answer. The public education system, which is where we raised our four kids in, again, different environment. My kids have been out of school for it, but even so, there were challenges involved there. Isn't Christian friendly, by and large. Any parent choosing this option, listen carefully, you're going to have to be nosy. Yeah. There's no way around it. You're going to have to, kind of, again, back to it, sit your child down every night at the dinner table. What did you learn in school today? And you're going to have to be brave enough and confident enough in your faith when they say, well, I learned that the world is 10 billion years old, and I learned that we evolved from a common ancestor with a one, some one-celled protozoa, you're going to have to be confident enough in your faith to say, okay, I know that's what they said, but that's not what really happened. And you don't get to throw that off on the church, the pastor, the youth pastor. That's your job as a parent. You're going to have to correct bad information they get, whether it's scientifically contradictory to the Bible or it's socially contradictory to the Bible. Well, you know, in public schools today, they're being educated on all sorts of things that the Bible considers to be abomination. And as a parent, I got to be some, and I know many good people who homeschool their kids. I think that's harder work than ever. Most parents aren't diligent enough to homeschool their child. They just aren't. Um, I know some that are, and I know some. One of the things I really, I, we have some folks in our church who are part of a homeschooling co-op. Yep. They've got expert, they've got people are expert in the subject, and they get together and they work together. Well, that's kind of like an, a, 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 a poorly, poorly the wrong word. 
It's one form of a Christian school at that point. And Christian schools are good if they have high enough standards. There's, I've, I've run across Christian schools that basically their philosophy is, well, a Christian school, what more do you want? Well, I want my child to actually get an education. I want them, same as with a public school, I expect them to come out being able to read well, do math, and understand history. And I think with a, especially, no matter if it's a Christian school or a public school, whatever you decide for your children, if it's not a, a homeschool option where you have direct control over what mm -hmm. the information that, you have to not be afraid to speak up. Mm -hmm. If if the teacher says something that goes contradictory to what you believe biblically, you need to have that conversation. That may be a tough conversation to have with that teacher, but you need to understand that that is your child. Years ago, one of our kids was in the public school system here in, in the Indianapolis area, and I won't go into all kind of details just to avoid embarrassing anybody needlessly, but they came home and they said, they told us again at the dinner table, this is what happened today at school. And basically, it was a propaganda film for Islam. Mm -hmm. And I got on the phone. I called the school headquarters, the school board for our school district. And I was polite, but I was firm. That's what you, got, that's what you have to do. Otherwise, they just shut you off anyway. And I said, here's what I need. If you're going to allow this teacher to do this, I'm going to expect that you're going to call me back and tell me when I get equal time mm -hmm. to present my viewpoint versus his. Do I need to tell you he never, that never happened again? Right. As a parent, I've got to be willing to take a stand, no matter what kind. Christian school parents put their kids in Christian school and think, I'm done. I'm finished. And wonder why when their kids graduate from a Christian school, they quite literally go morally berserk. It's not the school's job to educate my child morally, Jason. No. That's my job as a dad. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, expect the school oh, to educate they do. them morally. They do. And they, they wonder why these kids come out and, and they can't tell you who the presidents were, mm -hmm. but they can tell you, you know, social justice issues. Well, and they can tell you moral issues from a, from a standpoint you wish they didn't know. You got little girls who think they're Miley Cyrus. Mm -hmm. And as a Christian dad, that's my job. Yeah. And I, I, don't get to sh I don't get to shirk it, hand it off to the school. I don't get to hand it off to my wife. We're a team. We work together. Right. So as far as biblically, what, what can Christian parents strive to develop within their children, you know, as far as, as good habits and, and, you know, things that the Bible teach us as parents that we need to teach our children or pass along to our children. See, that's shockingly simple. We want to make parenting so complicated. It's really not. These are the positive traits I want to build into my children. And I have to be careful that I don't they don't have to look, walk, talk, wear the same kind of stuff. Thank God that I do. Mm -hmm. But they do. Deuteronomy read it, six, chapter 6, verse number 4. I, my job, is, I want my children to grow up loving the Lord their God. Notice I said their God. He can't just be my God. That's secondhand faith. It never works. Right. I want them to have a personal relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want them to come to a place in their life where they learn to love the Lord because they love the Lord. I want them to follow the biblical pattern of honor thy father and mother, that your days may be long on the earth. I want them to respect their mom and dad, because if they don't respect their earthly authorities, I'm a fool to think they'll ever respect God. Mm -hmm. I want them to respect, but not blindly follow authority. I mentioned a minute ago, and I've taught this for kids for years now, and it's just a simple solution. On a test in a school, when the school says, when the teacher said, this is the answer to the question, you evolved from how, you know, I tend to oversimplify that, but, you know, whatever the pro-evolutionary stance is, whatever it is, I taught, we taught our kids, here's what you do. You put the correct answer down. and For if the you, test. It, on the test. For the one the you're expecting, because I don't want you to flunk. That's dumb. Yeah. 
But at the same time, you, you are free to write in the margin of that test. I respectfully disagree with your opinion. Yeah. That way you got the test question, but you still stood up. That's what I mean when I say respect, but don't blindly follow authority. Mm -hmm. I want them to honor and respect their brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's their whole family as well as their church. And I want them to learn to relate to the world from a biblical perspective. That's what it meant in Ephesians I read a minute ago, 6, 4, when it said that I'm bringing them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I want my children to develop a biblical world view. If I do that, number one, I'll have all I can handle. And number two, that'll be the kind of kids you and I have talked about this. You've heard me say it for years now. Um, Brenda and, my have a, and I have a simple philosophy. Raise children you want to hang out with when they're grown-ups. Yeah. Well, that's the kind of things I want to see in someone I want to be friends with. Too often nowadays, we see parents and, and their kids become adults. And, and I've seen it mm -hmm. where, okay, your child is now an adult. Not prepared for life whatsoever. No. And you don't really like your adult child, mm -mm. you know, and it's and they don't like you. Yeah, and they don't like you, and and the thing is, is, is that can be hard because now you've developed a relationship of of animosity and and regret, antagonism. Yeah, all of that. Absolutely, you have. So we want our children to love the Lord. Exactly. I want them to have a personal relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's salvation, whatever term we're going to use for it. Being born again, accepting Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior, all of that. Because without that, you have no basis to work from. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 22, 6 tells me I'm supposed to train them up in the way they should go. And that's a part of it. Um, I want them to come to a personal knowledge of God. I want them to understand the Bible for themselves and, and read it. Um, I want to guide them but I don't want to dictate to them. That's the hard part. So I've, I've, a lot of people are probably familiar with Deuteronomy 6, 5, but can you, can you read that for us and, and kind of sure. explain a little bit better from a biblical standpoint, from a, from a, a pastoral standpoint, what, what that means and how we can apply it to our lives and our children's lives. It says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul and with all thy might. Well, no, that's, that's a lot, especially for sinful beings like us. The thing, and again, we, you and I talked about this this morning while we were setting up. Um, <laughs> understand that the hardest part about raising a child, and for that matter, being a Christian, is that these are little human beings. They're not robots. They're not clones. You can't program them like a computer. You know, a good programmer a few million bits of information and that program will do anything they want it to do and it'll never argue the point with them. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with a child. Um, they have, they have the, the theological term is they are free moral agents. Simply put, it means they've got a will of their own. Yeah. And my job, the hardest thing I have to do as a parent is to figure out how am I going to shape their will without breaking their spirit? Well, that's what that is for, that positing. I'm going to teach them to love the Lord their God. I'm going to teach them to love the Lord their God in real life, no matter what comes their way. I've got, in order to do that, I'm going to have to model it in front of them so that my message matches my living. Right. And that, sometimes that means, Jason, you got to do some hard stuff like look at them and say, you know what? Dad was wrong. That's hard to do, man. You know? Dad was wrong. I, sh I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. And I don't want you to think that it's all right. You can get away with it because you're, no, I was wrong. Right. Things like that. Make them feel secure. We've talked about this before, too. My concern is we got little girls who are going off into all sorts of horrible moral lifestyles. And I believe one of the primary causes is that dad wasn't the right kind of a dad to his girls. I wanted my girls to grow up thinking every guy they meet going to have to behave like my dad does to my mom. Right. And for the boys, and this is your challenge with two little boys, I wanted my son to grow up thinking, you know what? I watched my dad. That's how I'm going to treat my wife. Too often times now, 
we see a, a, a disconnect in couples. Mm -hmm. Sure you do. And that's where love the Lord I got. I want them to see that more, of, more than anything else, dad loves the Lord. Right. He's not perfect. He has his stupid moments. And I'm not going to try and hide them. No. But he loves the Lord. And he doesn't stay stupid. He loves the Lord. He'll, he, the, the Lord will help him. And I, I think you talk about a, a lot about this in, in couples counseling mm -hmm. when you, you counsel newly engaged um, couples. You have to, it's just not the two of you. Mm -mm. There's three people in that relationship. Exactly. There's you, your wife or your husband, and God. That's and if God does not come first, mm -hmm. if God is not at the center of your family unit, it's going to show. It's going to come out in your kids. It's going to come out in your living. And, and no amount of sitting in the, the pews that are out in front of us, no amount of listening to a podcast or watching church online is going to combat how you live. Because no. ultimately, your kids are in this sanctuary or, or in in a Christian school or in Sunday school for a, sh a longer period of, or a short period of time, excuse me, ultimately they're with mm -hmm. you a lot longer. And they if are. they don't see you living for Christ. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, if we wrap this whole conversation up into one nice, neat little package, I think it's like this. Ecclesiastes says two are better than one. Then it goes on a little farther and says, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. My family goal is this simple. Jesus Christ is in the middle. My wife and I are going to be as close to Jesus Christ as we possibly can be. And my goal as a parent is to wrap my arms around my kids and pull them in as tight as I can to that same relationship. Jesus Christ at the center, mom and dad and the family, all of us as close to God as we can. And I, we have seen this because I'm, I'm an ex said I'm not an expert. I'm an expert on being doing dumb stuff. <laughs> I ha, I, if I ever, I told parents, I've said for years, someday I'm going to write a book. Title of my book is going to be, You Cannot Parent from the Couch. That's true. And it's going to be about how, and I'm not going to write it by the way, but it's going to be about how you put Jesus Christ in the center of your home. Mom and dad make up their mind. He's Lord. And we're going to be as close as possible. And we're going to pull our kids into and do the hard work to get them there. And we're going to trust God to take care of the stuff we can't control. I think uh, I think we're probably going to cut it off there today. Uh, we we do have several other points we want to talk about, um, so make sure you come back next week. Um, there's several other things uh, as your kids grow up, preparing them for all kinds of life. Um, you know, I'm I'm excited to talk about these things. Um, so mm -hmm. with all of that being said, if you're about to be a parent, you're, you're thinking about having children with your spouse, don't be afraid. I think the biggest takeaway you can, you can take away is be involved, put God first, love the Lord, and show your children that you love the Lord. And I, I think that will go a long way to raising G-rated kids in an R-rated world. Victory family, thank you so much for joining us today. Pastor Don, it was great having you uh, kind of open our eyes a little bit to, to parenting. I'm a young parent. Uh, my kids are very young. He's been through this and, and has seen other families. So it was, it was really good. These are not, these podcasts aren't just for you guys, but they're also for me as well. Kind of opens my eyes to different things. So Victory Family, thank you so much for joining me. Remember to like and follow this video. Find us on the web at victoryindy.org. If you have any questions for us, reach out Pastor Don at victoryindy.org or through the contact us link on our website. Pastor Don, if you'd close us in prayer, please. Be glad to. And don't forget to share us with your friends. Yes. Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord. This is the, most, the single most important thing we will ever do, in, practically speaking, in this life is raising godly children. And we need your help. The world is not friendly. The world doesn't want us to succeed. You do. Help us to depend on you to raise young men, young women who know the Lord, love the Lord, believe in the Lord, 
and want to serve the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And until the next time, have a blessed day.